Molt bona tarda a totes i a tots. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here on this closing session of the conference. And thank you for your what it means on the commitment and on the topic that you have discussed. Just a couple of minutes, because every now and then at the university, we have sort of a, let's say, a secular justice. We face these odd times of secular justice. And I say odd times because yet we need to value them highly. When I was going through the contents of this conference and I was being told about this, you need to know, dear Catalan minister, that there used to be the commissioner rector that was appointed by the government, of course, a government uh, that I would say was not very much willing to accept the kind of conferences we've had today, uh, that led to a proposition, a statement by the rector, where he was proposing that certain behaviors were not just um, being able to be prosecuted, but also to being dismissed at full from the university with no file, meaning that that's quite the very limit of what the human mind can entail. So again, this is a sort of uh, secular justice because when talking about these topics here at the chapel <laughs> now, lo and behold, because right behind this curtain, there's a chapel, the non-consecrated part of the chapel, by the way, and a site, a building where not that long ago, there was the consecrated part uh, in the post provided by the Catholic religion. And this is um, not an easy world, where difference is perceived as a problem, or diversity is seen as a nuisance. Or I was hearing how some of the panelists were talking about doing away with a caste and breaking molds. And claiming and standing for this is seen by many as an impediment. Thinking, behaving differently is still today a reason for yourself to justify yourself, to excuse yourself, as if life would need ex an excuse, uh, any justification. So that, unfortunately, these type of conferences are still very much needed. and. Even if only to be against that rector, Rector Carreras, as he was known, we will keep on doing as we have done for long, which is committing to spelling out the truth and leaving our gates open to whoever with us are willing to speak out the truth as well, because that's the only way to move forward, to move away from mediocrity and banality. So thank you. Thank you once more for being here. Thank you for being the whole day with us. And this is your house. This is the house of us all. And this is the ideal place, again, a place to speak out the truth always. And yet, it's, uh, the vice rectors and the director of the foundation are heard me far too much, so it's up to the Catalan minister. We should be listening to her, because I think it goes to show something that here in the Catalan government we have this type of ministry. We have this uh, support, and it, is, it means something. So on behalf of the University of Barcelona, thank you very much for being with us. And we are deeply privileged to have you here with us. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Rector. Thank you very much, Rector. Good afternoon or close to good evening and congratulations uh, from 
to the organizers of this conference on memory and specifically the Solidarity Foundation at the University of Barcelona and the European Observatory of Memories. We can talk about many topics. We know at the Catalan Ministry that memory is a political event, is a political action, a bit on research, but also on public policies and on all matters that can be worked at the social movements. And when we talk about a political action from memory, one can identify several areas. A clear one would be recognition, recognizing a struggle for some rights. Here, the LGBTQ rights, which have never been taken for granted, and but rather they have been conquered with decades of mobilization in recent times, but a rebelliousness and a dissidence which is way more historical. A struggle to promote the rights of the LGBTQ community, but all in all, a struggle for the rights of the human people. So any development makes us a more democratic society. And this is a struggle, not just to be granting rights, but also for LGBTQ policies to be at the core, so they are not just an addendum and in any type of policy making, but the, all the elements of discrimination and lack of equality that we are faced are being taken into consideration. And this also highlights the value that we have in having this ministry, but also we need to recognize the mobilization of the LGBTQ community, the feminist community, uh, and also the anti-racist movement. Probably this type of ministry would not be existing without these social movements. So this is something to recognize, but this is also an act for reparation in remembering all the clear violations of rights, some more brutal than others, as the ones faced under fascist and totalitarian regimes in the 20th century, but that clearly show what this type of regimes can still do. We have many all around the world, and the LGBT people are still being persecuted. And even in some apparently democratic countries, you have no full entitlement of rights for them. And something that's been discussed in the latest panel discussion on the visibilization within this community, and particularly in the case of women, and in the case of trans women, because when we look back into the years of the the end of Franco's regime, but then Stonewall in the 68, but then it was like a decade where, where queer people and the LGBTQ community had been confronting the police. And at Stonewall, you had trans women, sex workers. And unless we remember all these, the last element in memory will be harder to incorporate. And that is how are we using it to work for the present and for the future, a present that is still under threat by the far right in countries where one would think that this would no longer be a threat, not because it had gone completely away. It is, this is something that has been kept, but the role that's been seen in the media by the far right was not projected some years ago. And the far right, indeed, they made no distinction whether you are a feminist, a lesbian, a queer researcher. No, it's all in the same bucket to them. So we try to understand and to make it clear that this is a shared struggle. And this is a, re a lesson from the past that can we can really apply for the present times. For our mobilization and the way we do our policy making in also to prevent violations of rights and to further promote against LGBT phobia. Because this is still a thing we're experiencing these days in different 
representations in different areas, in the labor environment, in the educational environment, in our communities. And just recently, the trans people and trans women have been um, beaten the object of many hatred, but not just from the far right, but the so-called feminism, feminist women. And it would seem obvious that it, we should have the more people in, and the main threat to women is still patriarchy and not trans women anyway. This lesson that seems so clear to the far right, the right as well, but maybe they are slightly subtler, but the far right is something that have it clear, so it should be clear to us as well. And so, since we are at a university, developing move, moving forward, means moving forward on public policies in all areas. Mercedes Terra was saying so. Better to have the laws rather than not to, and she has been crucial and she has participated. Has been she has been a strong proponent of many of these Catalan laws, and we at the Catalan Ministry, what we try to do is for the laws on equality are something to be truly enforced, which means rolling them out in all areas and in the universities. Well, there are some duties that can relate to the memory, recognizing the contribution of the LGBTQ community into the curricula, recognizing the contribution of them, and this can be practically seen because institutional discrimination, the one brought by the very public administration or administrations, or an LGBTQ on the healthcare environment, in the educational environment. If the universities are not incorporating this type of education, this type of learnings and lessons from the past, we cannot do away with these. Other than just safe spaces and working protocols, but more than anything, we need proper teaching incorporating the gender perspective, the LGBTQ perspective, the anti-racist perspective, so that we have a proper critically critical thinker as citizen and incorporating all these matters and subjects. So once more, thank you for this space for memories as a way for recognition, as a way for reparation and as a mirror to reflect upon the past and present and the future. Thank you.